In this lecture, we're going to learn what a life cycle assessment is, or an LCA, and how it impacts on the environment. We'll also look at the information from an LCA and evaluate the use of different materials for the same purpose. So let's look at this ugly trainer over here. Um, obviously Nike, not very pleasant looking. Um, to perform an LCA, or life cycle assessment, you need to ask some questions about the shoe. Well, firstly, you can ask what's it made out of. So, what chemicals? What chemicals? Uh, let's try and do some appropriate grammar. So, what chemicals have made the shoe? Um, are we talking about plastics, rubbers, fibers, glues? Because that has an impact on the environment. Then you can ask where it came from. So, did it? Was it manufactured locally, or was it exported and assembled somewhere else, and then imported and sold in this country? And while it was sold, is it distributed in a large scale or in a small scale? Well, quite clearly, this trainer came from abroad when it was made, for cheaper labour, and is sold all over the country and all over the world. So quite a wide area. So look at where it came from. That's another important component of a life cycle assessment. And then you want to know, how much energy was required to make it? So, energy used. This this is quite a hard one to, to find out really, because actually the manufacturing materials requires energy, the importing and exporting requires energy, the production companies and, and um, factories that require the power to manufacture them require energy, and all these things are part of the LCA. But that only gets us halfway. That gets us from nothing to the shoe to probably our house. But to find out the whole life cycle, we've got to consider what happens when the trainer dies. And by dies, I mean you stop wearing them either due to breakage or they've somehow become less fashionable than they are now. So once the trainer has been used completely, and it's no longer needed, it gets chucked away. And the question is, you know what, I might, I might draw a little bin there. So, the question is, where does the trainer go after it's shut away? And how does it affect the LCA? Well, if it's recycled, it means the life cycle assessment would show a positive use of energy. So there'll be um, less wastage and less um, pollutants. If it's incinerated and burnt, then if it produces harmful gases, that could be part of the assessment. And these things will tell you how environmentally friendly a product is. So you see there's four stages to an LCA that you have to remember. First of all, you, can, you have to consider the making of the material from natural raw materials. So how dangerous, how environmentally friendly is that? If you're you know, making something like um, glass, where you've got to use sand, You've also got to burn or produce alkalis to use in the manufacturing process. All of these are raw materials, and the way that you obtain them can affect how environmentally friendly or unfriendly it is. Then you've got the idea of making the product and manufacturing that requires energy, requires a variety of um, different factories taking up land space. That could have an impact on the environment. And also, the, in many circumstances, you need water so you need to use a lot of water to um, manufacture a product or to distill it or something. And that could then use up natural supplies in the area. And to use the water, eventually it becomes polluted and it can't be drunk. Um, and the use of the product, depending on what it is, can add up quite a lot to the environmental impact, water use, energy use as well. So for example, a shoe, not very important to consider. But a washing machine, once it's used continually every day for about five years that produces even more greenhouse gases and so on and uses water and then finally once your product's broken disposing of it feeds into your life cycle assessment because it looks at do you use water to dispose of it do you um, use energy to get rid of it do you get energy from it possibly if you burn it and use it as a, as a bio uh, as a, an, um, a fuel and does it affect the environment are you going to dispose of it in an area where it can pollute the rivers or, or the air? 
So, let's consider a couple of materials and compare parts of their life cycle. So let's say you're going to manufacture drinks bottles and you're going to export them by transport, say by lorry. Yeah, these are the most badly drawn drinks bottles you've seen. But these ones are made of glass and these ones over here are made of plastic. Now, in terms of the exporting via transport, would the plastic or the glass be better? Well, if you look at it, glass is far more dense and therefore you have less or fewer bottles could be carried by lorries due to the mass of the glass. Um, whereas plastic is less dense um, and therefore you can carry more bottles in each lorry. Therefore, if you're going to export 500,000 bottles of glass or 500,000 bottles of plastic, you may need quite a few more lorries for the glass and the plastic. And therefore you've got to consider that you're burning more fossil fuel to power the lorry and therefore producing more sulfur dioxide and therefore producing more carbon dioxide and therefore producing more nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide. So therefore the glass is probably worse in terms of transport. But that may, may, may not be the be all and end all. Because if you look at not the transport but manufacturing, you have to consider the idea that you're producing plastics from hydrocarbons using chemical reactions in the same way you are with glass. So depending on the figures that they give you, it could mean that overall glass may be better or maybe plastics better. And you can't really tell from one part of the life cycle. You have to consider all the individual steps. So when you're given information from a life cycle assessment, they'll give you a table or a graph. You've got to be able to say, using all the information, which material is better for its purpose. And you'll be considering the water used, the energy input and output, and the environmental impact. And that's what you use to justify your answer. So to recap, you need to know that a life cycle assessment, or an LCA, requires information about the, the, the making of the product from raw materials, the making of the product, sorry, making the material from raw materials, making the product from materials, using the product, and disposing of the product. And all those four things take into account how pollutant and how wasteful a particular material is.